All right, hello YouTube, this is Ryan, and I'm just doing an overview of AutoPad version 1.9 for iOS. I'm gonna show you some of the new features in the standalone app and in the audio unit as well. So if there's like anything you wanna dive deeper into, especially like MIDI functionality, I have some other tutorial videos in this playlist that you can check out. Uh, but for now, why don't we get started? I'm gonna open up AutoPad, and uh, the first view we see is the live mode. If you don't know, AutoPad has a live mode, which gives you easy access to all 12 keys, and also a set list mode that lets you create like a custom list of songs with keys and sounds, and even tempo presets for each one. So going back to live mode, in live mode, we can easily play a pad just by tapping on a pad. We can tap again to stop. AutoPad comes with 10 sounds, and those are the 10 sounds here in the factory bank. We can change between them in this menu. There are also some in-app purchases available. There are two free bonus sounds, so I recommend picking those up. And then I have some grainscapes and shimmer pads available for people as well. You can also import your own sounds by tapping in the upper right hand corner on the plus. And if we just, you know, I think there's another video where I, I show you how to use this. This is actually an AutoPad 1.8 feature, so I'll make sure you have the link to that one as well. And uh, in new in AutoPad 1.9, we actually have a favorites feature and we can put sounds in the favorites just by tapping on these blue circles. And this is gonna come in handy later because if we use the MIDI action for selecting a sound, that's gonna come from the favorites bank. So you can imagine that if you have like added a bunch of user sounds and you don't want those at the bottom, you can just favorite those and those are gonna appear easily at the top really easy to access with MIDI as well. All right, let's take a look at the menu, which is in the bottom left. AutoPad gives us control for crossfade time, which is how long it takes for AutoPad to go from one pad to the next. We have a low pass filter, and we can bring that down if the sound's too bright. And we have a high pass filter, and we can bring this up if the sound's too muddy. We have a reverb, dry, wet. We have pan controls and volume controls, both for the pads and the click. And new in AutoPad 1.9, we actually have four click sounds. I'd gotten some complaints about the one I chose in the previous version. So now you have four choices and hopefully you find one you like. So yeah, AutoPad has a click module, which we can set the tempo. And if you want to customize that more, you're going to have to use uh, the set list mode. But we do also have pan and click, or, sorry, pan and volume for the click, which means if we want to, we can actually pan our pads to one channel and the click to the other, and then just send that to front of house. And then you're getting a click track and some nice ambient space filler uh, all on one stereo channel. Uh, we can use Ableton Link to keep AutoPad in sync with other devices. I will link another video uh, for one of my other apps that shows you how to use Ableton Link. We can connect Bluetooth MIDI devices, and we have our MIDI controls here. I made a series of videos just dedicated to this new MIDI actions feature, which I'm really excited about. You're finally going to be able to control AutoPad's MIDI functionality exactly the way you want. You'll see we have uh, play pads action. We have live mode actions here. So play pads, stop pads, toggle click and select sound. Uh, we have set list mode actions and we even have CC actions. So you can use like knobs on your MIDI controller to control the filters and the crossfade time and the pad volume and stuff like that. So be sure and check those videos out. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of how these turned out. I think people are gonna find them easy to set up. 
and also powerful enough that you can use really any kind of MIDI controller you want with AutoPad. All right, what else is here? We've got our AirPlay Flats mode. We got just some miscellaneous settings. Uh, and if you're ever not sure what is going on, I put a put together an AutoPad manual, so that's available in the menu as well. Okay, before we go, let's just take a look at setlist mode. Um, the way setlist mode works is to play the setlist. You have to hit the play at the bottom, and then these four cells on the right uh, become buttons. And we can just tap those in any order we want, and then stop, we'll end whatever's happening. So if we want to edit songs, we're just going to swipe to the left. And if we want to rearrange songs, we're just going to touch and drag. If we want to add a song, we're going to hit the plus in the bottom right. We do have the ability even to disable pads, which uh, maybe you just want to use a click track. You can disable pads and enable auto pads click there. Don't forget these sliders, you can just touch and drag on those. And you can also uh, just use the plus and the minus there. We can select a sound and a key from these drop downs just by tapping. We, going over to the bottom left, we have a setlist manager, which just gives us like super basic access to, you know, maybe setlists we've used in the past. And we also have the ability to airdrop setlists to our friends. So, you know, if we want to keep our whole band on the same page, it's really easy to do that with AutoPad. So that's just an overview. Uh, be sure to take a look at some of the other tutorial videos that I have on AutoPad, especially those ones for MIDI actions. I think if you're using AutoPad in any kind of serious live setup, I think you're going to find a way to do it with MIDI actions. So thanks for watching. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. I'm documenting my progress as a developer and just let me know how you're using AutoPad, how you like it. It's super encouraging for me to hear from people that are using it. It honestly blows me away that so many people out there are using it and finding it inspiring. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.